Hello and welcome to part 3 of installing DSpace on an Ubuntu server. We, uh, to find this installation procedures, please go to the wiki, click on that link on the bottom right, then click on installation here. So previously we did this procedure, procedure 1, and then we did procedure 2, and now we're going to do procedure 3 which is installing the DSpace repository software. I just want to warn you again, you use best practice and these installation instructions differ radically from the DSpace official instructions. So we click there and the first step is to log into the remote server. Um, Please read this, make sure that you, your server is uh, open on the campus firewall or on the proxy server. Because this is needed to download software to enable the Java web applications. All the instructions are done as the DSpace user unless otherwise explicitly specified. Okay, so step one is to get in, log into the server. I covered these login procedures with um, press procedure two. Um, when we prepare the Ubuntu in that step and um, basically you have three options and we're going to use this option here the Ubuntu desktop option where we open a terminal and then we remotely log in using that nomenclature so let's log into this I've started up the server on my local machine so let's log into it so we SSH into it as a DSpace user and the server is listening on this address, which we'll use to log into. And we use the password 09 Ubuntu 09. So there we are, logged into the server, and there's nothing in that folder. And we are basically ready to continue. So we've completed step one, logging into the server. Um, just a note, if you're using the Ubuntu desktop, you can use the Ubuntu uh, Unity File Manager to also connect to the server, and it's very convenient. Um, you use this nomenclature to connect to the server, and it's also very um, handy to when you're doing upgrades to uh, use the Unity File Manager and to be able to do comparisons between a previous version and the current version. Okay, so let's go back to step one. I go back, sorry. Let's go back to our store D space step one. Okay, so we've completed that. We've rem remotely logged in, so it's the next step. Next step is to get D space. The current stable version is 5.5. Um, we just type that, which means go to the current change directory. If you just change the CD like that, it takes you to your home folder. As you see, we are now in home D space, which is where we want to be. And if you want to clear cut from the screen, you just type clear and press enter like this. And there we go, nice clear screen again. Okay, so to get, I've conveniently uploaded um, the active versions of D space onto my um, library web server. So all you have to do is copy this, here, like that, and copy that, and then paste it into the screen here and press enter. And there we go, it's downloading the uh, latest version of Ubuntu. So, and also here I've made some notes. Before continuing, we should always check the release notes, um, check the DSpace support page. Um, we tried to stay one, we, we did stay one version behind, but we now did the latest version. Um, also check out a list of repository software. And if using GitHub, uh, check out the GitHub commands if you want to use GitHub to get the latest software. Okay, so carrying on now to the next step, we need now to unpack that software. So as it says here, yeah, replace all instances of XXX with the DSpace version you selected. So we copy that, select that and copy it and then we paste it in here. And then we change the XXX, as instructions say, to the version. So we type 5.5. .5 and then we press hit enter and there it's extracting the software and to show you we type ls-l and you'll see there's the folder with the software in it now 
there's the folder with the software and there's the source code all right step three the step two um, is then to create a link to the source code and to make sure that the link points to this path the source path and it creates this path to get to the source code this is very convenient for um, the documentation so if this version here changes you just change the source link and you'll still have your code documentation will still be current if you use this as the path to the source so you don't have to change your documentation everywhere when a new uh, DSpace version is released um, you just tell them in one place to change this link here so let's create that link just make sure we're in the home folder we go like that just to make sure we're in the home folder just to be doubly sure and then we type this and then we again we change the triple x to the version of the space user so here we change that triple x to 5.5 we're going to point it to 5.5 for source code okay now if we do a listing again ls-l long listing we see now that that source points to the latest version of DSpace. So now we can always refer to that source in our documentation to point to that link, which makes setting up the documentation upgrades extremely more simplified and streamlined. If you want to know more about symbolic links, is what we call the command creating a symbolic link, there's the uh, uh, more information about creating symbolic links. A very uh, powerful trick uh, is to do that symbolic link. All right, so we've done that one. What's the next step? All right, now we need to edit the DSpace configuration for the version of DSpace. The configuration files have changed radically between version 3 and versions 4 and 5, and will change again in version 6. In version 5, the uh, config file, the main config file now is called the build properties file. There's still the DSpace config file, but the one to build the initial DSpace and to rebuild the DSpace is the build properties file, which is much simpler, has a lot less uh, parameters in it. Things to be careful of when uh, modifying this file is not to comment out any settings do not comment out any settings leave them as they are with blanks and then very important is to make sure that you correctly specify the installation directory as I said before we never install uh, software in a top level folder we we'll install software in a previous folder so we get to install our software in home DSpace so that we can use the dollar home variable in documentation and in scripts and everything makes the system administration a lot more simple a lot more stable yeah so i'm just repeating that with the release of dspace we have a new with the versions of dspace 3 and, and up the new configuration and uh, config elements are involved so please read that and take note all right and here's an example build properties file so here's that critical ins install uh, parameter, directory install directory. And here's the critical host name part. And then again, most of the stuff's critical. So anything here with percent sign, uh, enclosed by percent signs, is something that you need to set up. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, m uh, configure build properties for that for our virtual machine so we copy that paste it in here hit enter so now we into the config file so we go down here <coughs> and we want to do the one important install directory just clean this up create spaces so the install directory there is forward slash run d space um, because we're using a virtual machine and the local host is not going to work, we're going to just use the virtual machine's IP address for the host name at the moment. But remember, you must use the host name that you um, negotiated with the campus administrator and what you've negotiated with the 
repository manager, the very important persistent hostname. So there we're just going to use the IP address because we are going to talk to a local virtual box, virtual machine. And then the base URL, we've uh, eliminated the 8080 because we're going by to the default port 80 so we don't have to specify it. So we have a nice clean simple URL to use. And again we're just going to specify the IP address. The URL includes the protocol and the IP address. That's what a URL means. It includes the protocol and this IP address here. Okay, we're going to leave that as it is. The DSpace user interface is the XML user interface. And we're not going to use that parameter because here we're just going to make the URL here again point to the base URL. And so we keep everything very simple. So we're going to eliminate this forward slash here. And we just go to that forward slash there and take that out, leave it there. So there it's very simple. D space URL points to the D space base URL there. This base URL here. Very simple. D space name, we're just going to leave that as it is. You can give it some name. Yeah, the solar server, very important for D space. Again, we're going to remove the port 80 because it's we've set uh, um, our server to listen on port 80, not port 8080. And again, because localhost won't work with a virtual machine, we're going to point it to 192 to the IP address .server. Okay, and for us in South Africa, we're going to use the ZA, Z Africa language. Then we come to the important DSpace configuration, database configuration. I remember earlier on, we installed the PostgreSQL server and created all the DSpace database credentials. And that is the password for us. That's the username and the password to connect to the database. Uh, we can leave the rest as it is. Uh, it can be changed later on when you're doing performance performance optimization. Right, uh, our mail server uh, and our campus mail delivery server is mail.sun, so let's just leave that as it is there. Uh, if you need any username and password to connect to the mail server, you must use that. If there's a special port it uses, you must change that port. And then you must put in these email parameters. Um, on our campus, we have a generic email account which we call Scholar at Sun. So this is what I've put in there, and uh, in a feedback recipient. Uh, oh, what page? Are I, uh, what did I do? Uh, sorry. Okay, um, the feedback recipient. Same uh, email address: Scholar at Sun. Ac. Za. Uh, webmaster again we uh, point that to scholar at sun scholar at sun today recipient for server errors or oh, that's me the guy who runs manages the server so that's me my email address um, now registration we again scholar at sun Okay, um, we haven't registered the handle for the server, so we're just going to leave the handle parameters as they are, handle prefixes as they are. If you need a proxy um, to connect to the internet, this is a good place to put the proxy parameters in. And I'm going to leave the log level settings as they are info, which is the default. Alright, so we finished with our build properties file. So we are ready to build the DSpace application. And we save it again with nano control O to write it out and then control X to get out. Okay, so basically we are ready, should be ready now to build the DSpace application. So we go back to the step there, and now we go to the next step. Okay, just to make sure that we have the correct permissions and ownership, we run these two commands. Now let's do that quickly. Always, always with Linux, Unix, make sure of ownership and permissions of files um, do that again okay there we go and then we do this one to give full read write permissions to everything in the home folder just to make things simple and make sure tomcat can read and write to those folders 
Uh, and then we want to transfer the source folder to do our build. You see there, as I said, that source link. You don't have to worry about the version and the documentation. You just use that. So you can see now we are inside the source folder and we're actually inside the source code. There it is. You can see the source code. So in there, we type this command. We execute this command to uh, build. A lot of stuff will be downloaded and scroll by on the screen. Uh, it will take quite a while. If you have problems with and it does the software and you don't have a yet build problems, please go through this troubleshooting and check the troubleshooting. Okay, but for now, let's try it out and paste it in. And, and press enter to execute the command. And we should start to see some activity as it starts building the application. All right, I did a test build before and the Maven um, code uh, was downloaded. It took about half an hour on my internet connection. I have uh, about a, a one megabit connection. So it took quite a while. So this build should go fairly fast. Um, it doesn't have to download software. It just has to build the DSpace application. And there it's building classes and then we see it's now getting to build uh, they're building the XML user interface and we got XML user interface uh, it implementing local customizations uh, and now it's building the uh, war file for XML user interface. Now it's doing the JSP user interface. So this will continue for a while. So here I'm going to pause and I'll be back when the build is finished. Okay, I'm back. The build is completed. It took three minutes because I've already did a previous build and downloaded the Maven software. We get a success for all the modules. So now we are ready for the next step. So let's do that. Let's go to the next step. <coughs> now we must use the ant installer. So for DSpace 5, we go there, we click there, and we type ant fresh install. You only do this once with install, and that should do the trick. If you're doing an upgrade, sorry, I made a mistake. First, we go into the installer directory. Uh, there you see I can make mistakes. I'm fallible. So let's go to the DSpace installer folder. There you see where we are now. To make sure, and there, from there, run the ant fresh install and paste it in. Okay, there we go. Now it's doing the ant build. It's creating the folders, the first time folders. It's updating the database, installing database code. And now it's copying the, ex the, the war files to home DSpace web apps. And those are the web apps that we want Tomcat to serve up later on. And as I said earlier, if this is an upgrade, you type and update in that folder. And there's some uh, code from the previous previous test build. And now it's downloading the uh, <coughs> GeoLite database. And I'll extract the GeoLite database and install it. And there we do. It's installed and it tells you now to connect to it we must use that URL you remember that 192.168.27 and we have a build successful and it took uh, less than a minute even on my small computer the ant compiler the ant installer worked very well okay so please make a note of this very important 
now we go back to step six and we go to the next step now and this is the important one where we create the super admin user and there's the super admin privileges and to, to be um, with sysadmin we're just going to go back to our home folder type cd now we're back in our home folder yeah, home d space and from there we're going to run this command to create the administrator and we paste that in <coughs> some notes do not let any unauthorized persons have access to your dspace admin account this should be only for the repository manager and so forth this is a very powerful account um, with the old dspace versions this password is displayed on the screen so if you're doing a demonstration installation using these instructions be careful about typing in the password okay so for this machine we're going to use my email address as a super admin so we type that in there and my first name is Hilton and we type that in there my last name is Gibson and then the password we we're going to use the same password we use for the dspace account so it's 09 Ubuntu 09 09 Ubuntu 09 to confirm and we say yes all of that looks good and now we wait for it to create the administrator account this might take a while on my slow machine so I am going to pause until this is done and I'll then I'll be back Okay, I'm back. There the account has been created and we get a successful creation. So, what's the next step? Step 8. Okay, this is the very important step. We're going to enable the Java web apps on the Java Tomcat web app server. Just to note, this procedure is completely different from the official DSpace documentation. In that we do not use the mod JK, we do not use Apache port redirection, and we do not even use the Apache web server itself. Okay. So the problem is the DSpace web apps have been compiled in this location, but Tomcat only serves up web apps in this location. So how do we get the web apps from here to here safely? and correctly there are several methods and I'm going to use what I call the automatic linkage method so that if you change anything in that folder it automatically changes in this folder so that method saves you con constantly copying web apps which may incur an error um, after a compile and you might do a lot of compiles if you do source code and modifications so this will eliminate a lot of errors when you do this copy okay so the requirements as we did before is to make sure that Tomcat is listening on port 80 so how do we actually do this let's click here because we're using Ubuntu 404 so the first step is to create the web application shortcuts in this folder all right so we're going to go to this folder there we go and paste and hit enter okay so we're in this folder as we can see there the present working directory we're in volume tomcat in here we create those links to the web apps in the home d space folder so the most one of the most important applications we want to run is solo so we create that link there and we press enter and then we create a link to the rest web ap api as we want that application definitely and then we want the ora interface for interoperability definitely want that one so we enter and then we want the sword one so that you can integrate um, deposits with other third party systems all right so what does it look like uh, once we've done those links so if we type ls-l in this folder you can see now 
we've got links pointing to the Home Depot. So, so if anything changes in this location, it's automatically changed here because of the link pointing there. Very convenient. Okay, now we're going to get rid of this later on because that comes with the Apache Tomcat installation, that root red app, and we're going to modify that. That's a special thing. So we want to configure now the default root web app. We want to move it away from the default Tomcat root web app to our root web app. We want to make one of the root web apps one of the user interfaces. And we have standardized on the XML user interface. Okay. So the first step in making our XML user interface to the root app is to remove this default root web app from the Tomcat server. So we go and do that quickly. And there we go. And it should have disappeared now. If we look, there the root web app is gone. Okay. Now we go, we're already in that folder. Now we create this link to point to the XML user interface for the root web app. And we paste it and we press enter. Now if we do the listing, we can see the root now points to the XML user interface app. So that is our root app. That is the one with what that will come up first. It won't require a forward slash XML interface as we because we configured the build property, we removed that funny forward slash XML user interface. And Tomcat will recognize this as the root web app. Okay, so that's option A. If you want to use the new JSP user interface, you follow these procedures to make the JSP user interface the root web app. Okay. And there's a sample listing, uh, as I showed you here. And then to make that active, restart the Tomcat web app. I've included some solar help here, because the solar uh, um, application is pretty critical to the operation of DSpace. So here is uh, here you can test your solar web app after installation. I include the solo help wherever, wherever required in this in the documentation. So don't worry if you don't can't remember where to find this. Uh, it's all over the documentation, especially when you're doing customization and configuration. Okay, so there we go. The Tomcat server restarted nicely. Um, there's no problems. It came back with an OK on the restart. So there we have completed the very very important linkage or what I, what I call the automatic linkage to um, all the web apps so let's go back step 8 now we must look what's the next step so we've completed this so what is the next step and we type cd again good system admin practice to start from the beginning and now we're going to test the database connection Copy. So before we go production, we want to check that the database is good. So we do the database connection test, and we should come back successfully. We would have had problems with this um, when we ran the Ant fresh install, um, because that had to connect to the database. But I'm just demonstrating that this is available, and it's a good practice to use this. So this, this step could actually have been performed just after the Ant fresh install and before creating the administrator. Um, I wrote up this documentation a long time ago and it probably needs a good cleanup. Then we're going to test the schema, that the schema updates happened automatically, uh, which is a feature with this very nice with 5.5. All the schema updates are uh, done automatically. And this is confirmation when you run that, it should show you that it's done all the updates from the very first version up to the latest version there. And so now we just wait for that to happen and we should come back, we should come back with, um, and there we go. We've got success here for all of those um, schema updates. So. Theoretically, you can upgrade now from a DSpace version 1 right up to DSpace version 5 and all the database schema up updates are done automatically. That's fantastic. A really great improvement with DSpace 5.5. .5. All 
All right, the next test we can perform is the test email. Again, email is very important for subscriptions and workflows, etc. So we just type that in there. This may not work very well because we don't have a proper host name for the um, machine. So we're just going to wait for it to come back with the email parameters. Okay, it came back with the correct email parameters and we assume that it's going to happen. But on a production server with a good host name, please run this and make sure you get this coming back, the email sent successfully re is returned. I'm going to interrupt this with a control C um, and get back to the command prompt. Okay, so everything looks good. We have a database connection, email's good, database upgraded properly. So now we decide what's the next step. We go for what's the next step. Well, the next step it looks like here yeah, is to reboot. So let's do that. Um, Yes, you do reboot and we wait for it to reboot you just want to wait for the connection to get here we go the connection is broken so now I'm back on my local machine in my office and I want to ping this machine and when I get a ping back from it then I'm ready to log into again from uh, from my desktop and then when it's up, um, I'll show you how to track the uh, there we go we have a ping back from it it says 2.2 and not 2.7 okay uh, so now it's changed its IP address to 2.2 so let's see there we've got a 2.2 great so now we go and log into it as 2.2 okay alright let's try 2.7 maybe that was a lie okay still 2.7 alright so we log into it as Ubuntu 09 for those of you who are VirtualBox experts if you can find a better way of doing this please let me know okay so we're back in our server it's rebooted if you type PS3 we can see yeah, we have the uh, Tomcat running, the Java Tomcat, and here we have the database running. So it looks like we have everything we need for it to run. A little tip to check the uh, Tomcat as it starts up is to tell the log file. So we're just going to look at that, see if there were any startup parameters. So we're going to tell that file, uh, which is the Catalina file, Catalina out file. That's the main Tomcat log file. So we see there it's still deploying. I at the moment deployed the REST web apps. And it's doing some other deployment. Uh, there we go. Now it's deploying the ORA interface. On my machine this takes a couple of minutes. Uh, on a big powerful server this should have it should happen very, very fairly quickly. So we're just going to wait a while for everything to start up until we get to the point where it says it's listening on port 80. Okay, there we go, a whole lot of stuff. Now it's deploying the solar web app. Okay, let me just wait for it. There it's connected now to the database. Let me just wait for the solar web app. Okay, there where that started. Okay, now when we get this information we know now it's listening on the port 80 type control C to exit that and you can type netstat dash tlpn to see what's listening and there you can see it's listening on port 80 and there's the database listening on port 5432 and there's the postfix server listening on port 25 so everything looks good everything looks good it's listening on port 80 so theoretically we should be able to connect to it from our desktop now and actually see the web the dspace application so shall we try it let's go to another tab and we type in the full URL HTTP remember the URL is an IP address at the moment because it's a virtual box machine 
and it's listening up to 127. That is the parameters we used. And if we press enter like that, we should see it connecting to our DSpace web app that we just installed. Might take a while. And there we go. Fantastic. And then to test further on, we should be able to log in with that super admin user password user and password. I'm just going to minimize this and maximize this so we can have a look and see. There you see. There it is. Listening on a local machine. The DSpace application using the Mirage 1 theme on the XML user interface. So let's check. We need to log in as a super admin before we can hand this over to the operational team or to the librarians and the password is 09 Ubuntu 09 and we log in so there's my profile as the super admin and to prove that I'm logged in there so you can check the control panel have a look at some Java information it's using Java 7 on a 64-bit Linux machine there's the DSpace configuration, DSpace 5.5, its installation directory, base URL, host name, name of site, database, etc. etc. Okay, now this person who is logged in as the super admin now can create the communities and collections and carry on with the operational uh, maintenance of this DSpace instance. I'm going to log out now. And I'm just going to return the browser here, uh, bring the terminal back. Right, then the next step would be post installation, the critical post installation task, which I will leave for another video later, but we will use probably use the same virtual machine virtual box machine. I don't want to start this all over again. But there is proof of the pudding that this works. Um, if you are careful with the networking parameters, you can now set up a test installation of DSpace on your desktop. Uh, if you're using, I'm sorry, you can use a, if you're using Ubuntu or Windows, um, it should work on Windows as well. Okay, I'm just going to close that. Thank you very much, and um, I just want to point you out to the next step. So this will be the critical things you should do immediately after you've done the installation but I'm going to leave it there and leave it for some homework for you to try it out okay thank you very much and goodbye and good luck with your uh, installation